Welcome. Hello. To Oddity Files. The, pod- the podcast. Hell, it should be Oddity Files, the morning show. Dude. <laughs> oh, hell. How amazing would that be? Hold on. Let me turn my story on to old people view. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm not the only one. In our full screen. Oh, hell. There, I have to have it like that. Oh, mine's not even that big. Well, it's just so easy then. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I'm going to let you do the show description this time. Oh, hey, guys. We're Oddity Files, the podcast. the podcast, again, sometimes a morning show, sometimes a late night show. Um, we are a creepy, cryptid, otherworldly podcast. We talk about spooky things, but we're also kind of sarcastic with some humor. So whether you have the lights on or off, or whether it's morning or night, it shouldn't be too scary. Shouldn't be. This episode might be. Well, <laughs> we'll <yeah>. see. <laughs> <laughs> so Clayton and I don't know what stories we're going to tell. We just kind of give a brief description, like cryptid aliens haunted and uh we're on the same page again this week just like we were last week gotta stop it yeah well great minds think alike is all i'm gonna say all the aliens last week (laughs) yeah it was good it was good i i I listened to it a couple times not gonna lie i I, when i get in my car and i like hear something i'm like is that me (laughs) because it's like switched over and then i'll download it so i can re-upload it to YouTube later, and oh, right, when right. I hit download and I'm downstairs, and all of a sudden I hear voices upstairs, it's not a haunting. It's us <laughs> every time. Uh, so anything spooky, otherworldly going on in your life? Um, Not that I can think of. Um, That's always a DJ good thing. DJ Jimmy had a spooky dream. Ooh. But Ooh. I, when? Last night or last tonight? Last night. I had one the night before. Was it about a witch? No. I never remember that much of my dreams. Really? It's so weird. Sometimes I have the most vivid dreams. Yeah. I do, I haven't since I was on Wellbutrin. No, not Wellbutrin. What's the other? Chantix, when I tried to quit smoking that one time. I still remember that dream. It was the most beautiful Ferris wheel um, kind of fair thing. It was stunning. But you were on a Ferris wheel? No, I was looking at it. Oh, I was like... Heights? Yeah, no. that would be a duh. bad dream for you. <laughs> Oh, uh, hey, we added all kinds of merch. There's so much new merch. The weirdo elves were hard at work this weekend. They were. Inspiring other elves to do work as well. It's halfway Christmas or something. I know. Well, almost. Almost. But you can check out all the awesome merch at oddityfiles.com slash site slash shop. Cool. I um I got an update on one of our stories that we did a couple weeks ago. Oh, did we say something that's not true? No, 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 no. Oh, I was like, um, oh, gosh. It was Indigo. She spoke about the lights she saw in the sky, oh, and right, she was right, pregnant, right. and her baby heated yep. up, and we're all like, oh, my God, I hope the baby's okay. Yeah. Well, she responded with, hilarious, hilarious, you jokingly said, like Jack-Jack from yeah. the Incredibles. Incredibles. Because um, all my friends call him that because he never slows down. He's always on the go, 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 and has red hair. Oh. With the cat laughing emoji. That's so funny. Um, He's one going on two, and aside from having the time of his life with something at nap time and bedtime, nothing out of the norm so far. So he's playing with an imaginary friend in bed. So go. Ghostly aliens, I don't know. Or at least that we have seen. He's pretty much the cutest. Look at him. Oh. I mean, he looks like Jack Jack. He kind of looks like Jack Jack. What a cutie. But thanks, Indigo. We were concerned yes, about absolutely. the baby. No, what I said about that, I always, like, when I'm researching stories, you can't believe everything that's online. So sometimes no. you see things, and you're like, gosh, I hope this is true, because somebody's going to call my ass out. I know. Like, ah, it wasn't really like that. I'm waiting for yeah, that. Yeah, oh, I'm absolutely but waiting. so much of our stories are, like, they're all hearsay. So right. it's not like it's fact-based, yeah, like, true it. crime, you know? True. So That is true. Um, yeah. Also, um, we have a submitted paranormal in the news story. Oh. I'm pretty stoked about it. So, this comes from Katie, and the title of the email is Dobie the Chupacabra. Hi, Kitsy and Clayton. My name is Katie, and I work as a park ranger in Florida. In recent weeks, I've discovered and listened to every episode of your podcast, 
and on my nightly patrols. I need my glasses. Holy hell. <laughs> aging poorly it adds to the spookiness of driving through forests at night and i love it oh that's cool i know uh since i basically listened in reverse i just finished the episode where clayton shares his story on the chupacabra i volunteer as an animal refuge at an animal refuge and wanted to share with you this article that went sort of viral about a hairless raccoon that was brought into us last year the day it was brought in I was so excited because we were not able to identify what type of animal it was at first. And I was really hoping we'd found a chupacabra. <laughs> <laughs> She's our kind of girl. Absolutely. <laughs> Anyways, I'm attaching Take it home, the link. Take home, call it a pet. Yeah, exactly. I'm attaching a link to one of the articles. Thanks so much for all your work. And I'll go ahead and read the article real quick. It's It was in the Orlando Sentinel. First, can we look at this cute little oh my hairless gosh. raccoon? I think they should all be hairless. They look like it should like be an option. I know, right? They kind of look like little bitty kangaroos. We'll put that on our Instagram story for those of you who are listening because this is a podcast. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but if you go at Oddity Files on Instagram, DJ Jimmy uploads pictures to go along with every episode, and then he puts it in the highlights. So if you are backtracking, yep. like Katie, you can still see the pictures that go along with it. So the um, subject title. Headline, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Rare hairless raccoon resembling a mythical creature creature struggling at Back to Nature Wildlife Refuge. So, found hiding beneath a car last week, a rare, almost mythical-looking critter is fighting for her life at the Back to Nature Wildlife Refuge. The refuge identified the animal resembling, resembling a mystery beast called the Chupacabra as a hairless raccoon likely affected by either alopecia or a genetic mutation of some kind. Some at the facility have called the six-pounder Dobby because oh, of her resemblance Dobby. to the house elf from Harry Potter. But how cool is that? That's I, I so won't cool. read the whole article. You can look it up on the Orlando Sentinel. Um, that was cool. If you guys have stories like that, yeah, I want to read them and Absolutely. share them. Yeah, we're not like... Snooty, we'll share all the stories. Oh, absolutely. Careful. Yeah. <laughs> no, but thank you, Katie. And thank you so much for listening and spreading the word. I know. We're always saying, well, who is listening? Well, Katie's now listening. We Katie in, in the dark. In, in the a dark. forest. Maybe we can like tag along sometime and go chupacabra, chupacabra hunting. hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot hunting. Oh, no, it's skunk ape down there. Oh. Yeah. Because I, I'm assuming it's skunk ape instead of Bigfoot down there because it smells, because of the BO, because it's hot. There has to be like some alligator cryptid in Oh, Florida. I bet there is. Like an alligator that walks on its hind legs. Katie, let us know. Let us know. I feel like I've heard of something like that. Well, there's a villain in Spider-Man that's like that. Oh, God. What the hell's his name? Doc Ock? Croc Man. Oh, I Doc was Doc Ock's on, the... I was on Octopus's side. <laughs> I don't They're know. I made up Croc Man. That might not be right. <laughs> oh, but you can send your stories, your experiences. Everything. I mean, that's pretty much a paranormal experience if For you think sure. about it but it just ended up in the newspaper um at oddity files crew at gmail.com .com. or you can send it on all of our socials you can find us at oddity files on instagram and twitter also on facebook just search oddity files and we come up we're actually right now live in our super not kind of sort of secret facebook, facebook fan group, group. yeah so we'll delete it when we're done. So if you yeah. just happen to catch us, you like get a, a little sneak heads peek. up. Yeah, exactly. You can see how much stuff we say, DJ Jimmy, cut that out. <laughs> Actually, we've gotten better. We have gotten a lot better. I was impressed. Unless I mean, you know, dying from pneumonia. Thank you for cutting that out because that's never fun. Oh, gosh. When the demons come out, <laughs> that's what I always call it. Your cough fits. Oh, yeah. She's just expelling her demons. It's It's awful. Absolutely <laughs> awful. I'm dying from the inside out. Demons. Yes. Um, we also have two seasons on Amazon Prime Pre Video. Yeah. It's free to all Prime members. Mm -hmm. But even if you're not a Prime member, you can download episodes or the season. The season's like five bucks. Boom. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite episode? That's on Prime right now? Yeah. Oh, I'm just so partial to Higgins Sport because that investigation was so much fun. It was. And I think that's I have more of like an emotional attachment to that one because yeah. that investigation was so fun. It was. And that was our first one, just the two of us. 
And we were terrified. Terrified. And so much happened there that we could not figure out if it was an animal walking down the hallway, a human, a spirit. Like, yeah. We could not tell. No. I mean, we had cameras pretty much everywhere. So we know it wasn't an animal walking down the hallway, but right. it could have been something in the walls. But I just meant, like, or... in that point in time. Yeah. Like, I was, I was scared. And you could see it on the. Oh, totally. And then, of course, bats. All Huge bats. fans. Um, of you. <laughs> the what about bats you? What's, what's your favorite you? episode? I'm going to go with Culbertson. Oh, duh. Gosh. Just because so the great place too. was so stunning. Yeah. And like we were one of the first paranormal teams to go in and yeah. investigate it. I know. So if you guys, speaking of our merch, we have a shirt um, that has all of our names on it. And then you'll, you might notice two names that you may or may not recognize. So, Anna is actually a spirit that we um, borrowed from Culbertson. She's back now. <laughs> Literally. Um, I hope so, anyway. But she kind of, like, assisted in a way. On um, a couple episodes. On a couple episodes. And then Walter is the name of the person who attached themselves to our spirit box and only could say one word. And it was your name. It was my name. And he um, was your biggest fan. Biggest fan. But we would hear his exact voice, and it was very, very distinguishable. Right. And we, Anna's as well, her voice. Yeah, That's how sure. we knew it was them. Because um, when we were in Australia, their name or their voices came over, and we were like, this is not okay. This no. This is crazy. No, it was so weird. So that's why it says Kitty Clayton Carter, Anna Walter. Yes. The whole the whole uh, investigative crew. Yeah. We've, we've, we've been meaning to make that shirt for a hot minute. I know. <laughs> it turned out great, though. Great job. Everything looks good. All the yeah. new merch is great. Buy some. Sure. Or even like, you don't have to buy a t-shirt. Get like a sticker. Throw it on your laptop. Something oh, yeah. Like some of those uh, like little die cut stickers They're turned so out cool. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Especially the witches one. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely amazing. So is there anything you want? I feel like we're, we're like running super fast today. Are we? I think we're just, it's morning. You we have energy. You probably had coffee. I'm working on my Starbucks refresher. Um, uh, uh, um, code word oddity files. <laughs> Starbucks.com slash oddity files. God, I wish. <laughs> You'll probably get a 404 error. Ignore it. Oh, I do have a, a really cool interview from a friend of mine oh, later yes. on today. He's actually going to be on portals to hell yeah which is katrina weidman and jack osborne yes that osborne new show on travel, travel channel. channel and I, I binged it it was it was actually oh, was it not good? bad who is on the new show that my little sister tagged us in uh, it's like the original taps guys oh it's jason hawes steve gonzalez and steve gonzalez yeah dave chango yeah but it, it it was actually really done. I was a little turned off by the name Portals to Hell right. because you know how I feel about all that. But I feel Ghosts like that's aren't a asking. good name for their demo, like their demo. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 they weren't all about proving they were demons. They were that's trying really to cool. figure out who was actually haunting the place. So definitely check it out. And you know, Aaron Sagers is on this coming Friday. So I actually was binging it on demand on my cable. And I got a sneak peek at Aaron's episode. Oh. They're at, um, oh, God, what's the prison in Philly? Pinhurst? Or, no. No. Um, the one that we state, went to? Something state. No. Oh, Eastern State? Yes. Cool. Dreams. That's amazing. Hashtag goals. Uh, next bucket list. Oh, my God. Actually, speaking of bucket list, I was, so you know the mansion in Cleveland that I've wanted to get into yes. since Katrina was there? Mm-hmm. Since we're currently filming for season three, for those of you that don't know, I was trying to reach out to them, just find out what we need to do if it's even possible. Yeah. And it's now privately owned Son of by some like block. foreign, foreign company that's that's like renovating it and all this stuff. Just like, to sell? I don't or? know if they're gonna because it's massive. I don't know. They could easily make that place into like four condos oh, or something. Absolutely. I'm like, this is one of the most haunted places in the country, and you're just gonna come in. And modernize it. Yeah, that's sad. Wow, I hope you didn't hear my stomach in the mic there. <laughs> but I was Jimmy, like, want want because it was loud. <laughs> the weird thing is, you know what? I'm gonna pull it up. Okay. The people that own it, and if you guys are listening, whatever country you're in, uh, let us investigate. But it was like, 
it's a a product a production esque company, and I was like, that's so weird. Um, I wonder if Franklin like- Castle is what it's actually called. Yes. Um, and it says the owners are Oh Dear exclamation par- exclamation mark Productions. Oh, maybe they're gonna do a. Maybe they heard our idea about renovating a haunted place and making a TV show out of it. But it's Sons so weird. It looks bitches. like they do like music videos. Oh. Maybe they're going to turn into a studio. And then their website is, it's all, it's very cryptid. <laughs> like when you go to their website, that's all that it is. That's very creepy. Absolutely creepy. Huh. So, oh dear productions. We would like to investigate. We'd love to get in there. Uh, before you completely... Franklin Mansion? What huh? did you, you say it was called? Franklin Castle. Franklin Castle. Calling it a castle is a little bit of an overstatement, but it is a very massive place. Guess how much it sold for. You're going to be pissed. 20 bucks. Oh, no. A lot more than that. <laughs> but for the size of it, $260,000. Oh, fuck. Damn it. We should have been on that. Oh, gosh. We miss all those opportunities. I know. My we dr- act like we would actually buy it. <laughs> I know. My dream is to own a haunted location. I've decided I don't want to live in it anymore. I just want to turn it into like our podcast studio place where we can investigate anytime we want. Ooh. Which would be kind of cool. cool. Maybe my oddity shop. Yes. The oddity shop can also be our. But I like this room. Oh, I can recreate this. I okay, got this. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure you can't hear my stomach? Because it sounds like I'm farting. I, okay. <laughs> Thank God. So um, I've got stories. Have you got story? I've got a story. I do have stories. You know what we did forget to talk about? Our names. Oh. I'm Clayton Abbott. <laughs> I'm Clayton Abbott. And I'm Kitsy Duncan. And we have stories for you. We do have stories. Um, who I... goes first? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Okay, so as I was telling you before we started recording, I was looking up like, true hauntings, not of like an item or a place, but just of a of a an occurrence, if you will. Okay. Um, so naturally, the very first thing that starts popping up everywhere is like movies based off of true hauntings. Right. I was like, oh, that could be cool. So a movie that I've actually never seen because I always thought it was like. Just another one of those movies. Um, Haunting of Connecticut. Haunting in Connecticut. I've actually seen that one. So I didn't realize how much of that movie was true. Oh, yeah. Because you know how it's typically like based on true events. Right. And then they just use like the place and then everything else is made up. I think the mother was – she wrote the book and then they based the movie off the book. Like pretty dead on. Yeah. So it's crazy. So if you don't know, the movie is based on the Snedeker family who, on the 30th of June in 1986, moved to 208 Meriden Avenue in Southington, Connecticut. Cool. The house was spacious, the rent was cheap, and it was near their son Philip's hospital. Yes. So after they had moved in, they discovered that back in the 20s, the house was used to be, uh, the house used to be a mortuary called the Hallahan Funeral Home. What was wrong with the son again? He had like an early stage of cancer. Okay, that's right. And where they lived before, they this was the hospital that he was going to, so they were traveling like great lengths. So they just found this house that was cheap and um, close to the hospital. So, yeah, in the 20s, it was Hallahan Funeral Home, and it stayed a funeral home for several decades. The Snedeker family actually found mortuary equipment in the basement hid behind building materials, so again, keep in mind, it's not like they bought this place. They're just renting it. Right. They also found a small graveyard out back in the drawers full of eerie corpse photographs. Ooh. I would already move out. I would be selling those on eBay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so not long after moving in, the family claims to have been haunted by spirits within the house. Naturally. They reported hearing strange sounds and said the temperature would change in most rooms and they would see figures of dead people appear. Ugh. And this is a quote that I pulled out from Carmen Snedeker, that's Philip's mother, about the spirits. She said, they were incredibly powerful. One of them was very thin with high cheekbones and long black hair and pitch black eyes. 
Another had white hair and had white hair and eyes and was wearing a pinstripe tuxedo and his feet were constantly in motion. Pause. The thin, high cheekbone, black eyes one. I could go my whole life without seeing anything. That fits that description. <laughs> and, sounds so but scary. his feet won't. I can't get over his feet won't stop moving with the tux guy. Is he like clogging. Oh yeah, maybe. What's what's that Irish dance where their upper body just never moves, but their legs are going crazy? <laughs> like an Irish jig. That's it. <laughs> so their real life son Philip, like I said, did have cancer of the immune system, and they moved to be closer to the hospital. The mom, Carmen, says that she was never told that the home was previously a funeral home upon moving in, and she said that she never went into the basement due to, due to the renovation materials blocking the stairway, okay. and only found um, only found the equipment after they had moved in because you know when they first checked out the place, like she said, they didn't. Right. Go, it's a basement. Now, in the movie, the son slept in the basement. I think. Okay, I'm not sure. Hollywood embellishments. <laughs> So, however, the former owner and in-house neighbor says that they were fully aware before Oh, the family in. was. Okay. So, who's, who's right here? So, Carmen also claimed that when she was mopping the basement floor, the water turned red. And she said that the dishes used to put themselves away. Oh, that's nice. I need that ghost. No kidding. <laughs> and lights would flicker on and off even when they took light bulbs out. Ooh. So, a lot of energy in the air. Yeah. The younger son, Bradley, apparently did get spun around uncontrollably on the gurney, on a gurney. And they also found toe bags and <laughs> toe bags, toe tags and, and head tags and other personal items of the deceased. Okay. What is the kid doing on a gurney at home? Uh, I, I, I mean, okay. he's just a. Uh, I don't judge. Yeah, whatever. If it's there. <laughs> so in the film, it shows Philip attacking his cousin. This really happened, and cancer-stricken Philip was taken by ambulance to a mental home for 45 days because of it. Oh, God. Yeah. Philip was also diagnosed with schizophrenia after talking about the spirits talking to him. Well, he, he was targeted, I, I yeah. believe, the, the most. So his family said he became distant, dark, and violent after moving into the house, which he never showed any traits of prior. Aww. The Seneca family brought in paranormal researchers, including John Zaffis. Who, Love um, him. Really? He's um, actually Lorraine Warren's nephew. Ed and Lorraine Warren, because pff, who doesn't have love to, them? Yeah. To just naturally help with their problems. And he collects haunted objects. He has like a oh. place on his house, uh, on his land where he collects haunted objects. That's, he had a show for a hot minute. That's scary. <laughs> so the Dreams researchers <laughs> believe that the former. Funeral workers were guilty of necrophilia, which led to the evil presence. Oh, I just threw up my mouth a little bit. Carmen later reported that former workers were found guilty of that crime. Oh, shit. Although her reports have never been proven. Okay. According to the current owner of the Salington um, home, Susan Trotta Smith, the true story is that the house was is not haunted now and never was. So, Why does everybody got to rain on everybody else's parade? She I don't says, understand. we lived in the house for 10 years. Our house is wonderful. This is all Hollywood foolishness. The stories are ludicrous. So, But yet, when they moved in, the people who rented it to him said they knew it was haunted. They knew it was a funeral home. Oh, a funeral home. Yeah. You know, I wonder if because the, chi- the son was sick, I he was, was closer to death, and maybe it kind of opened up that, that third eye, yes. if you will. So a lot of reports that Carmen and Alan contradict um, each other's stories is it's why a lot of people doubt their claims anyways right. because like they're both so different. But one thing that people can't argue is that during the treatment in Southington after they left the haunted house, Philip Sedekers went into remission and he went on <gasps> to have four children and became a truck driver. Oh, that's amazing! Um, and again, that was in like the late eighties. Um, I did find an update. Um, unfortunately, Philip Seneca's cancer did return and, uh, January 9th, 2012, he passed away at Aww. age 38. Um, but what are the odds that the moment, like shortly after leaving the house right. because of all this stuff, he it's- got better, his like dark, violent acts just stopped. Maybe ghosts cure cancer. Hey. You never know. There are weirder things. There are weirder things. <laughs> um, but I'm definitely going to need to watch the movie now. 
that I've read. It's, that. it's well done, and, um, God, well, and that's what I'm always so hesitant about because there's so many like haunting of blank, haunting of this, haunting of that, and it's like okay, and some of them are not good. Yes, no, I, I, I fully agree. I think that one. It's the poster that turned me off to it the most because it's not a very good poster. I don't remember the poster. It's like this boy like leaning back and it looks like stuff's like coming out of his mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah. With like got the house in the background yeah, maybe? I was like, okay. that's campy. Yeah. Was it, but, it was like bugs coming out of his mouth yes, or something. Bugs. Speaking of bugs, Lyme disease is on the rise. Of course it is because that's not terrifying. That's more scary than ghosts because apparently maybe ghosts can cure Lyme disease. Worth looking into. We'll follow up next week. (laughs) Um, No, but it was interesting. Um, And as everything that I found, the house was still there. Wait, honestly, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say this. From what I've seen in my life of dealing with spirits and whatnot, some people spirits interact with, some people they don't. Yeah, we have proof of that. Literally. (laughs) Um, Here's my thing. I don't know why people are so convinced that funeral homes are haunted. I don't get that one either. People don't die in funeral homes typically. No. Like their bodies are there. Right. Which is, yeah, like, okay, a bunch of like corpse. That's pretty creepy. Yeah. But like, why do people think that the funeral home is haunted? I will say, growing up in a home that was formerly owned by people who ran a funeral home, my house was haunted. You think that had something to do with it? I, I believe they may have brought them to the house. But why were they at the funeral home? I don't with? know. That, these are questions we want answered. But you get, do you get what I, I mean? I get your point, totally. Because I've I never mean, really thought about it. You, if they died in the hospital, you think they'd be at the hospital. Right. Or maybe they would choose... I like to think if you want to haunt, you get to choose where you want to haunt, <laughs> and you'd you'd you know find the assholes in your life and haunt right. the shit like out of them. There's like a Zillow for the afterlife. Yeah, like um, that looks great. On that note, it kind of segues into Seriously? my story. Zillow? No, no, no. Oh, haunting assholes. <laughs> I'm like, how the? <laughs> hey, Clayton, how do you research your stories? Well, I just grab my laptop and then head over to Google. Well, let me stop you right there. I am hooked on Audible. You get the full story in an audiobook instead of reading poorly written articles online by Joe Schmo. Oh, is is that audiobooks in like a convenient app on your phone? One million percent. If you just head over to audibletrial.com slash oddity files and you get a free book just for signing up. That would be perfect when I'm driving or working out. Well, maybe the one time I work out every other month. I really need to do that more. But I do listen on the airplane and in the car all the time. Okay, okay. I'm going to take out my phone right now. What's what's the link? Audibletrial.com slash oddityfiles. That's super easy to remember. Audibletrial.com slash oddityfiles. I tell you what I'm listening to right now, but that would totally give away my upcoming story. So Understandable. There are so many books to, to find on here. I mean, everyone should just head over to audibletrial.com slash oddityfiles and listen to all the good things. I know. Everything from bestsellers to some of the more obscure, which are my favorite. Where should these lovely folks listening go to get their free audiobook right now? Audibletrial.com slash oddityfiles. Hey, Kitsy, so you know how people are always asking us how they can get started in the paranormal? Oh my gosh, all the time. So we typically suggest just like a K2 meter, maybe an EMF recorder. Mm -hmm. Um, But when we're ready to get really serious, the only place you can head over to? Only place. Where? Go stop. You go to oddityfiles.com slash site slash go stop. Go stop is our one-stop shop for our show. They literally have everything you can think of my personal favorite is this ir rover that we can use when we don't want to go into those asbestos filled basements (laughs) those are terrible Uh, my favorite as everybody knows spirit box so head over now to oddityfiles.com slash site slash ghost stop and check it out for yourself right now what are you up to this weekend oh my god you're totally coming over and we're gonna play hunt a killer Wait, what? So it's this really cool subscription box, but it's a game. You know, uh, I, I had some other plans. What are, you, what are you talking about? No, so it's this box that's shipped to you once a month 
for like six months. And the box gives you clues and evidence so we can catch a killer. It's like we're the detectives and we get to solve the actual murder. No, I actually think about uh, th- that I've heard about this. It's a box and each month you get more clues and more evidence that helps you find this killer. It's, it's almost like an escape room murder mystery thing mm-hmm. right in the comfort of your home. But what would be even cooler? What if our listeners could do this? Well, duh, I am so ahead of you. If our listeners head over to huntakiller.com and use promo code oddityfiles, one word, they can join in as well. My favorite part is you don't have to leave the house and get all people <laughs> So listeners, just go to huntakiller.com, use promo code oddityfiles, one word, and start hunting a killer on your own. One million percent. I did the season pass, so I prepaid for all six episodes, and I got free shipping. Well, I guess I'll just have to cancel my... Um, you know, quote unquote plans, <laughs> and we'll do it this weekend. So cool. You need to bring the wine. And for you listeners who want a piece of the action, head on over to huntakiller.com and use promo code Oddity Files. <laughs> so, uh, my story is the legend of the albino woman who haunts Rochester Cemetery in Topeka, Kansas. Oh, gosh. Gonna need a sip of caffeine for this one. What would the name of that movie be? They pretty much call call her just the albino woman, which I thought was disrespectful, so I added words. (laughs) Okay, legend has it, in the mid-century, Topeka, Kansas, lived an albino woman. She was teased and tormented as a child, as one could only imagine, could, I can't even imagine. Even in her adult years, the children would still call her names and torment her on a daily basis, just because she looked different. She could only leave her house at night. Because if you're albino, you can't be in the sun, right. correct? It's very harsh on you. But that freaked people out as well. And would supposedly glare at children from her window as they walked to and from school. And I don't blame her because there's nothing worse than ash- assholish children. People, raise your children better. Um, in her adult years, she grew her hair out extremely long and it was stark white. Her affliction caused her skin to be so white it almost had a bluish hue to it. Oh, my gosh. And, and the stories say that her eyes were a pinkish blue, almost like a violet yeah. color. Now, she was known to the town as the albino witch because people Ugh, suck. do that. Exactly. People do suck. Way to judge, people. Way to judge. There are several accounts of people claiming to have known and remember this woman. There's even one account of a gentleman saying that his father used to drive her to the grocery store occasionally, but he never knew her name. Even to this day, her name is unknown. Wow. Uh, I know. One reporter found the law firm who handled her estate after her death, but oddly those records were lost and destroyed somehow. I bet. Eh, Oddly. It seems a little sketchy. Um, but this was confirmed that she died in 1963, allegedly, because okay. there's no proof. Did you see on Twitter? We said allegedly so much last weekend. Somebody was posting allegedly gifts on our timeline. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Philip Schneider. Yeah. Now, one story I came across claims that she was killed by some townsmen and was buried alive near Rochester Cemetery, Cemetery, but closer to, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this. I can't wait. Shunganagawa. S-H-U-N-G-A-N-U-N-G-A Creek. Okay. Lots of G's and N's and U's. Um, legend has it that they buried her alive just because they were dick faces. Whoa. Maybe they thought she was a vampire. All jokes aside. The whole, like, fair skin coming out at night. Well, and they were calling her a witch. Why people got to judge witches? <laughs> I'm just saying. Where are my witches at? T-shirt. Out of defiles. <laughs> Anywho. Um, so, the they... Lost place, of course. Oh, and other accounts um, actually say she d- died under mysterious circumstances. That seems to be the go-to is the mysterious circumstances. In 1964, a year later is when reports uh, start of seeing the bluish-hued woman with long white hair and glowing red eyes in and around Rochester Cemetery. Glowing red eyes? Red, glowing red eyes. I did Google because I always thought that I know albino rabbits have red eyes, but I'm like, oh, right. oh God, do albino people have red eyes? No. I don't it's, think so. It's, if it's blue and pink, it's, it's more of a lavender color. 
So from a distance, she just looks harmless, like a frail little old lady. But stories say the closer you get to her, the more sunken in her face appears. It almost appears to be decomposing. Many people who have seen this apparition claim they feel a sense as though she's out for revenge and her intentions are malicious. Usually their fight or flight sense kicks in and people usually choose flight. No kidding. I wouldn't run towards it. Fuck no. (laughs) I mean, I wouldn't run towards her. I'm sure she's a very nice lady. I'm sure she was wonderful. Um, Some claim to see her walk through their yards on clear evenings. Some even plan out to watch her walk through their yards. And when they do, she sometimes pauses, looks directly into their eyes, and then continues walking on. Creepy. No, thank you. One woman claims... She and her boyfriend went to the cemetery on her birthday for some fun and romance. Who is this woman? I don't know. I'm not judging, but I'm judging. (laughs) Who has sex in a cemetery? Anyway, not judging, but I a little bit. Anyway, so the couple's getting all touchy-feely, and the woman claims she sees a witch rise out of the ground and start rushing towards them. I mean, come on. Have these people ever seen a horror movie? Sex in a Cemetery? Duh. They should have seen this coming. So the couple begins to run out of the cemetery, and the bloom woman is chasing them. The witness said, not in a fashion trying to scare them away, but as though she were out for blood. Which is terrifying. Absolutely. The cemetery lovers were so scared. Once they got home, they performed a ceremony on their front door so that the spirit could not follow them into the house. Fair. Yeah. Don't be fucking in the cemetery, people. I mean... I'm just saying. Lesson one. (laughs) So the next personal account is from James Allen George, and this is at one point was all over the internet. So I'm actually going to read his story. This was found on the Topeka History Geeks Facebook group. It was August of 1964, and I was trying on clothes in the dressing room of the children's department on the second floor of Politer's department store, which my grandmother was manager of. It was time for me to get my new school clothes. School was going to start soon, and I would be entering the second grade. Suddenly, the door to the dressing room flew open, and there stood a tall, veiled woman dressed entirely in black. Nope. What? Her eyes were visible through the dark veil as she reached out a gloved hand toward me. As the arm came closer, I saw with horror the pale, almost bluish flesh of the arm between her sleeve and the glove. In the dressing room. In the dressing room. Yikes. I let out a scream, and she froze in her moment. Uh, Duh. Done the same. I would have done the exact same thing. Appearing behind the tall, frightening figure was the small stature of my grandmother. Summing up the situation, quickly my grandmother forcibly ordered, leave, you're not welcomed here, to the veil woman. Oh my gosh, yes. I have goosebumps. Uh-huh. Slowly, I slowly turned as I crouched back against the wall. I heard my grandmother repeat, you are not welcomed here, and then ordered, now leave. The tall figure with the red eyes and the bluish skin silently glided past my grandmother and towards the stairwell. I ran to my grandmother's arms and watched along with the employees that had come running when I screamed, the frightening figure descend the stairs and then quickly disappear. Whoa. It's like in a public place. That's so weird. You never hear of that. It's always uh -uh. like, you know. In my home. Nobody could see it. Funeral homes. Exactly. I was to learn later that this apparition was that of the albino woman who had died the year before. I was not to learn until four years later why she had sought me out. One hot summer evening in 1968, as I lay asleep in my bed by the window to catch what little breeze had drifted into the bedroom. He writes this very well. That's why I'm actually reading it. We were poor and air conditioning was not a luxury. We could afford so... Rotary fan, wait a minute. Oh, we were poor and air conditioning was not a luxury we could afford. So a rotary fan moved the stagnant air around in the room. I was awakened by a scratching sound on my window. Goodbye. In my groggy, half-asleep state, I thought it was my cat. 
blue boy. Blue, I'm not saying coincidence, scratching on the screen. Stop it, girl, I mumbled. That's when my cat hissed. I opened my eyes to see blue boy, her back arched, her hair on end, and was hissing at the window. Oh. Nope. I would cry. Yeah, I'd put the covers over my head and pretend like it just didn't happen. I rolled over and looked into the glowing red eyes of the albino woman who was standing right outside my window, glaring at me with an intense stare that was without emotion. This is four years later? Yes. I screamed and scrambled out of my bed. My mother came running into the room and saw the hideous apparition still standing at the window. Leave us alone, damn you, my mother screamed. Leave us alone. My mother grabbed, grabbed my arm and shoved, shoved me from my room. And then she says, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. Now leave us be. It's like it. I haven't seen it, so. My mother yelled as she exited the room and slammed the bedroom door closed. I found out that night that the albino woman had lived in a house in my mother's childhood neighborhood. And the mom was a little bitch. Mm-hmm. My mother and her friends had taunted the poor hapless woman every day as they walked to and from school. The revenge. mom probably like stoned her. This time, it's revenge. I you like know what? It. I'm on her side now. I am too. I'm totally a hashtag. I actually wrote that. Can I just say hashtag team albino woman? Absolutely. If I could come back and haunt everyone that pissed me off. Oh, wait. Not like it. Freddy Krueger. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I mean, I do it in a heartbeat or lack thereof because I'd she be says, I'm sorry. Okay. No, bitch. I'm dead. Yeah. Yep. And you made my life miserable. And, and now it's your turn. Payback's a bitch. Now, to this day, employees at a nearby Goodyear tire factory claim to see her regularly still. I need pictures. I need I video. Know. And some neighbors see the apparition as often as once a week. Oh, my gosh. She is so at unrest, you know? We just need to investigate Topeka. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I think people just need to stop being assholes so this stops happening. But see, we'll like come in being all nice to her, being like, we just want to tell your story. And she's like, oh, well, then, yeah, I don't, like, you're nice. I don't need to show myself to you. <laughs> Sometimes I think that's the case. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> if, the, if it's that description, listen. Yeah. You guys just wait. All right, go ahead. No matter what the cause of death, the, th- the sightings of this woman are accounted by many. And some of them, like the story by Mr. George, are like something literally out of a horror movie. Yeah. And that is the story of the albino woman in Topeka. That's really cool. I've actually never even heard of that. Like, never heard of it or even caught anything about it. I, so I have this this note on my phone where okay. I, if I'm watching TV and somebody even just mentions, oh, mentions like, something, I'm like, albino woman of Topeka, Kansas. And I just put it in there and then I go whoa. back later and, and look it up. I want to know if if you or anyone you know lives in Topeka – Yes. Have them email us, oddityfilescrew at gmail.com. We just want to know if what their thoughts on the story are. Because yeah. I'm sure they know someone who has, um, you know, seen her. Or, yeah, witnessed this. And I want to know her name, the poor thing. I don't think we're ever going to get that. If we take the Wonder Box, we might get her name. That's true. We'll That's just true. call her Elizabeth for now. Because they okay. were like all Lizzie's. Allie. Or Allie. There you Albino go. Allie. Oh. I like it. Like Terry the tarot card reader. <laughs> we have all the best names for people. No, what I was going to say is um, you'll see it in season three on one of our investigations. I actually get, I feel a physical touch <laughs> at which point I jump and we are in a very cluttered room. Very cluttered. I almost go down about 12 times. This is karma <laughs> from when you almost <laughs> fell. Oh, yeah. Totally. And I I left. I was like, we're done here. I'm out of here. Guys, it was beautiful. So entertaining to watch from the other side of the room. There's one point Carter and I were off somewhere else and, and we start walking back to Clayton and he's flipping shit. And I'm like, Carter, let's just hold back. Let's just watch this go down. Well, because, and again, you'll see it and these aren't like spoilers. I get, I feel something touch me that first time and I yes. jump. Well, then it comes back and touches me harder, if you will. Yeah. The second time. And I was already on edge, like scared. Oh, yeah. 
Oh my gosh. And when I say there was a ton of stuff in this room. It it was it was like an attic filled with all of grandma's left grandma and grandpa and their cousins leftover stuff. Pretty much that fact. Everyone's grandmother and grandfather <laughs> and cousins. It was so full of stuff. They had just these walkways within the stuff. And so here I am behind some of the stuff, get grabbed, trying to get out of it. It's dark as hell. Ugh, season three. Crazy. Um so we touched a little bit on our, our celebrity interview, if yes. you will. But I'm going to give a little bit more info on Aaron because I feel like I didn't do him justice and I wrote this up. So I'm going to be fancy. So Aaron is a longtime friend of mine who I met, you know, doing what we do, living the con life. Um, he's a wealth of geek and paranormal uh, information. He used to do the Q&A panels at Comic-Cons for both paranormal and just regular old geeky fun stuff. He's been on both the Travel Channel and the Sci-Fi Channel. He's also got a website called paranormalpopculture.com and he's super excited about tonight's episode of Portal to Hell with Katrina Weidman and Jack Osborne. Like I said earlier, I watched it. It's probably the best episode of their season, so definitely check it out. Um, And here's Aaron Sager's personal ghost story, who he claims not many people know. Heard it first here, people. Um, I would say that the my kind of professional beginnings in the paranormal go back to 2005, 2006. But I've been investigating and interested in the paranormal all my life. My angle with all the paranormal stuff is I approach it as a journalist and a researcher. And uh, I take sort of fact-based things uh, and then... Bundle it, bundle it up with paranormal theories, you know, so here's the factual history, here's the theory, and here are the eyewitness accounts and sort of how they all work together. But I start from a place of fact, and, um, and then I've kind of tracked the connection between the paranormal and entertainment, sort of how one influences the other. Awesome. And well, I know as, as your friend that you are a huge skeptic, so I cannot wait to hear your story. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, but the the thing about skeptic is like skeptic is not a bad word. I'm I'm taking no, skeptic. It's not. I'm taking skeptic back. Okay, like uh, you do that. <laughs> it's it, you know what's a bad word. What I think is a bad word is like cynicism. I think cynicism yeah, right. is not something to be. But like, but you know, I also I don't think dogmatic diehard believer to the point of ignoring. Uh, potential explanations. I don't think you want to be that way, and I don't think you want to be a cynic where you dismiss everything. So it's like there's a sliding scale in between where a healthy skepticism but also an opening for belief can exist, and that's very much where I I am. Okay, I am am a skeptic who wants to believe. Yeah, well, I mean, but and that's the thing is, like, you can believe and still be skeptical. I, You know, it's just you're trying to find the most reasonable, the best explanation, you know, instead of leaping to conclusions. Uh, well, you know, I was, I was thinking, um, I was thinking about this podcast. I've told a lot of ghost stories. I've been on, you know, countless investigations and shared a lot of my experiences. And I was trying to think of something that I hadn't talked about. And I, I think, you know, I'm going to rip the bandaid off something and talk about something with you. Um, and it's a little oh. bit of a, a little bit of a history. It's a Sager's family history. Um, that I have not talked a lot about. I'm the youngest of five kids. Uh, I was raised Catholic and a in a pretty religious observance um, household, but not hellfire and brimstone. And some weird things happened to my family as a kid in, in my house on George Street. Uh, and I was very young. I don't recall all of this, but I do recall that there was a time that my family was gripped by fear, especially the kids, the way our house wow. was set up was the kids were in the back part of the house and my in the master suite, my parents' bedroom was in the front part of the house. So I remember as a child it felt like a a, a insurmountable distance to cover from uh, my bedroom, which was the farthest back in the house, to my parents, which was the zone of safety. So there was a time <laughs> when a lot of crazy stuff was happening. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Like, oh, I know, do. Like when you want to get to your parents' bedroom, it's like, you want to make that trek fast, you know? Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, there was some weird stuff that happened. Some of it that 
I'm going to hold for another time. But I will say um, my siblings were quite scared. And um, and then there was a night that I experienced, and I vaguely recall it. I was quite young, but waking up and um, I had a bunk bed with my brother, Adam. He was on the top bunk and I was on the bottom bunk. Uh, waking up and seeing this large, uh, tall, this tall, very thin figure presence oh. in in the um, in the open door in the in the door frame. Oh, and, there's nothing creepier than that. <laughs> and um, being really, really kind of frozen with fear by that that image and. Um, and I recall details from the face that looked um, malevolent, like inhuman and malevolent. Um, yeah. And it was just looking and cocking its head. And and I actually, um, I did I did tell that to uh, my family, but um, I also, it's one of those things that was a bit of an unreliable memory because I was so young and um, and I didn't know what I had kind of filled in, what I had colored in yeah. by what other people had mentioned or an active imagination. Um, I don't know, but I will say that um, it was, it was terrifying. And then years later, Uh I was in, I was in high school. I was a senior in high school and it must've been right about the time that I was graduating, about to graduate. I had a dream. I was living in Georgia at the time. I grew up in Florida. I was living in Georgia at the time. Um, I had a dream that I was at a graduation party. Everything is very celebratory and fun, and um, and it was a very happy dream. And someone in my dream kept, like, uh, calling me, you know, like, hey, come here, Aaron, come here, come here, Aaron, come here. And, um, and I remember walking through this house where this party was being set and, like, you know, walking down these hallways. And, um, and the further into the house I got, it was sort of the voice was changing in my dream. Come here and come here. And, and it became yeah. less of a friend's voice and it took on more of a serious tone. And like, come here, Aaron, come here, Aaron, like deeper, uh, more serious um, and almost uh, uh, almost threatening, intimidating. Oh. And, um, and so it was starting to get creeped out and I, uh, in my dream. And I start to to gain consciousness. I start to wake up, not wanting to be part of that dream anymore. I just I want it out. Right. And I kind of wake up, gain consciousness, and I am sleepwalking. And oh. I am sleepwalking just inches away towards my closet. And as I'm about to enter the closet, I hear with awake ears at this point, come here, Aaron, come here. There was still no. this voice backing me forward. And um, it felt familiar. Um, and it was, it felt like the same kind of presence. It was like, it almost right. snapped me back, snapped me back to that, to that like five-year-old kid, you know, just sort of felt like, you know, and I wasn't really sca- like I wasn't really scared of a lot of things even at that age, you know, 18 years old, I guess, when I was graduating college or uh, high school. And and yet this was just gripping fear. Yeah. That I felt like something wanted me, and I ran back to my bed and and as an 18 year old, you know, boy, young man, covered my head with the the sheets with covers, and you know, was just like hoping it would pass. Um, Absolutely. I still do that and, sometimes. <laughs> and, and some other weird stuff happened in that house in Georgia, but what's interesting is that that presence has also uh, presented itself at other times in my life, and even oh. um, twice more that I can think of. Uh, I, I, I live in New York City, and um, there was a New York apartment and I was, um, uh, you know, sharing a bed with, uh, you know, with, with my ex. And um, we both had the same dream the same night of a presence of, of this darkness where, again, in the closet, um, this thing that was calling us both forward 
uh, into the closet. We had the same dream the same night. Um, That's and then insane. There, and there was another time where I saw again something uh, in a separate apartment in New York um, in in a door frame that conjured the same image. Now, there's a lot of theories that can go into this, but right, it it felt always familiar to me and um and i you know i i certainly if i was telling you this story i would probably say well yes sleep this sleep that you're not totally aware or conscious and maybe it feels familiar because it's a sense of fear and like you know but not actually the same phenomena i look i can argue i can i can play the other side of this and argue up and down all i can tell you however is that for me someone that works in this world and is not prone to alarmist behavior or leaping to conclusions, I can mm-hmm. say that this has felt like this terrifying thing that has occasionally made itself known in my life. Well, I wonder what, if you'll ever figure out what it is. I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things that I do have certain internal limits, like when it comes to uh, things that I'm I kind of create boundaries with where I'm like, okay, I'm probably not going to pursue that thing. Um, I don't know about this one. I mean, because, you know, there is something about some, uh, there is, when you're at home and you experience things, when you're in bed and you experience things, you are vulnerable in a place that you are supposed to feel the most safe. So um, that is, that, that feels a little creepy. And I'll also say about that one apartment in New York where the, the shared dream took place. It was an old building in New York, and there were times where I would wake up and, and not just not just to sleep, but there would be times where I would sort of have a sense of something just sort of passing through. Yeah, and that didn't bother me. It, that didn't bother me. That was just like old building. If if yeah. there is something else sticking around there, you're just kind of walking through. They're just doing their own Shared thing. Shared space, no biggie. Shared exactly. space, no biggie. And that you know, you you might get startled, but not. And and there's a difference, and I think. I think you understand it. I, I would. I think a lot of your audience understand. It. There's a difference between being startled. I can easily be startled. You can jump mm-hmm. around the corner and and you know get me or ha- you know I, I watch a lot of horror movies. You can make me oh jump right. Ah. You know, but gripping fear is a different sensation, and there was a distinction between what I felt. So um, yeah, so there was other stuff happening in, in various apartments and places, but. That was a distinct sensation. Okay, first off, stuff following you is scary. Totally. And as fellow investigators with experiences of that, Mm -hmm. it can get scary. It really can. And it can have really lasting effects. I mean, it followed him from Florida to Georgia to New York. I mean, it's just... it's Everywhere, regardless. It's, It's something that is definitely attached to him. And... Super creepy. And Aaron is a very, like he talked about in the interview, a very, very healthy skeptic. Absolutely. Um, which I thought he was just like strict skeptic until we actually recorded this interview. So, but he's like us. He's a, he's a skeptic who wants to believe. He wants to debunk it if he can and sure. if he can't. But this, he just has no explanation That's for. That's crazy. I love it. I do so love it. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Aaron. Guys, if you have personal stories, um, Oddity Files crew at Gmail or any of our socials, send it in there. DJ Jimmy, I was thinking about because you know you've got your podcast coming up and you have the hotline. Do we think maybe we should add a hotline where people can just tell their stories? If we want to. Yeah. You guys let us know what you think about that. If it's something you'd be interested in, just kind of call in and then we can play it because sometimes reading is very hard for me it is and sometimes <laughs> when we're not a morning show when we're a late night show it's really hard and especially if there's like been any kind of alcohol involved absolutely at all. you have no idea how many yawn sounds that dj jimmy cuts out <laughs> when it's a late night show wah, wah. thanks jimmy you're thank the you. best <laughs> but you guys thank you so much for being here we love you yes. to death this you is have episode no idea. 25 yes next week we're six months old that's insane. That's stupid. That's absolutely crazy. It's amazing. It absolutely is. Oh, we have a contest. We do have a contest. Don't forget, rate, review, subscribe on Apple Podcast. And if you actually leave us a review and like take a screenshot of it or something like that and send it over to us at oddityfilescrew at gmail.com, at the end of each month, we're going to do a drawing. Yeah. And we're going to send you some exclusive stuff, like a signed 8x10, maybe throw in just like 
a couple other goodies yeah. to surprise you. But uh, basically, the way that we get more people to find us and see us is through reviews and ratings. Literally. And so it might sound like we're just trying to drum up some reviews, well, but we absolutely are. Yeah, we totally are. Uh, you know, we want to do this more. And we want to be able to do more live podcasts all over the place, which we're really excited about. But to do that, we do need a following. Um, we do. So yeah. we have, we think, we really, really think all the following that we have right now. Kitsy and I talk about it all the time. It's we're our like, friends and are family. are these thousand people a week <laughs> I know. that are listening? And it's great. But wouldn't it be so great if it was 5,000 or 10,000? Oh, my God. That would be more. so much fun. I, I love sharing these spooky stories with Absolutely. people. Well, just like the albino woman. I had... Never heard of that. Ever. I know. I actually, when I was researching it, I like searched for podcasts with this story in it. Nothing. Nobody's done yeah, it. So crazy. Yeah, because it, there was there was a lot of. I had to read like several articles and kind of piece together what sounded the sure. most real, if that makes any right. sense. Um, I hope I did it justice. I don't want the albino woman to leave Topeka and come here and find. If me. she somehow was at the second story window, oh, I would lose my shit. Especially but, that side of the house, it's technically like a third story know, window. <laughs> exactly. Uh, again, we can't say it enough, guys. Thank you so much for listening, for sharing our tweets, for sharing our Facebook stuff, for Absolutely. telling your friends. I get so many people message me saying, oh, I told everybody at work about you. Now they're listening. And it's so much fun. It is so much fun. And uh, self shameless, selfish, whichever word it's going to be. Um, two days ago, I turned 28. I was that's literally lot. just about to sing you happy birthday, and then I second-guessed it. <laughs> because I, I don't sing well. <laughs> happy birthday! But that's a lot. I yes. was at, we went to a bar the other night, and they scan your ID, and on this computer, it just pops up big and bold your age. And I was like, that's oh, aggressive. Oh, shit. <laughs> Remind me not to go there. <laughs> that's aggressive. I, I'm flattered if they even ask to see my ID. <laughs> right. It's not like they just scan it. It's like, you're good. It's like... <laughs> Wow. Oh, I love it. So happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday to my husband, whose birthday is the day before yours. Yes. And uh, oh, I had a great Mother's Day. I have to tell you about the gift my daughter in law and son got me. It's this necklace. It's like a key and it says fearless Ooh, etched in it. I like that. I'm, I'm scared of nothing except heights, snakes, and octopus, is as I. we found. <laughs> but I thought that was so sweet. That is really cool. Yeah. So, yes, it was, it's been a good week. It and has been a good week of celebrating. Yes. And this weekend we are in Detroit. Detroit ish. Is it Novi? Novi. Michigan? Novi. Whichever. Yeah. We're at Motor Just, City Comic Con. Yeah. Seeing a lot of old friends, a lot of new friends. Yes. We're excited. If you see us, say hi. Say hi. We want selfies with you. Yes. Please. Yes. And we might have some like stickers and stuff with us. So. If I remember to bring them. <laughs> also, speaking of stickers, please check out our n- new merch. We're kind of super duper excited about it. Yeah. It's oddityfiles.com slash site slash shop and all kinds of just fun stuff just for fun weirdos stuff like to us. To help spread the word. Yeah. And, you know, we are, as I say all the time, we are an independent podcast. Like we do this all from home with all of our own gear. TJ Jimmy is the one that edits and does all of that. So, you know, any any little thing helps our production, essentially. So exactly. even if you buy a shirt, I think we make like $2 off of it. Exactly. We're not, you know, out here trying to make millions. We just no. want to have like some good professional sounding quality. Exactly. And every little bit helps. So if you buy a shirt, buy a sticker, let us know. We'll shout you out on our social. Yeah, and our wish list right now is good travel equipment so we can do yes. more live podcasts and record them for you guys absolutely so help us sister and a brother out and check out our march yeah but in the meantime weird is the new cool and um i stole your thing nope that's cool that lady who says the house in connecticut is not haunted is the wicked sleek goodbye 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 Goodbye.